Hey guys, this is Zone Production, so we're in number 4673, and I'm back in Queen at Arms. And, um. I've given up saying the numbers of the parts because I forgot pretty much. Ah, oh, fuck! Sorry, he dropped something. I've forgotten to do that pretty much since episode 1. I'm sorry, I'm drinking tea. To help my poor salt throat. So I can still talk. Yeah, you see, we're talking about magic and how Rubus doesn't want to help James do, do, make, learn him to make magic so he can, like, poof his plant alive again. <laughs> Yeah, so your serious pursuits like keeping yourself from freezing, why don't you just put a damn shirt on? Oh, that's why he doesn't need a shirt. Hmm. Oh, James. Oh, James, James, James. You you clearly don't understand. Um, it's for the show. It's because it's, it's a pretty, pretty nice. Toy Story with you, if you if you know what I'm talking about. It's something like, and he knows it, so he thinks like, yep, yeah, gonna gonna give them something pretty to look at. <laughs> Sorry, there was a loud laugh from somewhere amongst the nearby soldiers. Rupert stopped walking, and James along with him. I dismounted from my reindeer in case there was a need for me to act, but I stayed back. As far as I'm aware, I'm not accountable to you, and I'm not obliged to explain anything. If you wanted we to live, you should have taken better care of it. It's dead. It's beyond salvage. It's not a w weed. It's a syringe vulgaris. Anyhow, I know you can fix it. I've seen you get that stupid flower of yours perked back up a hundred times. Something very sharp flashed across Ruby's eyes. It was a spark of light I see anything from, he, from him. He fist, his fists balled up as if they were about to land a punch. Do you? There was a tremble in his voice as he trailed off. Do you have any idea how magic functions? You think yourself as a genius, and yet you do not pay the slightest attention to my lessons, did you? Magic is not simply drawn from the air. You cannot reach up into a cloud and pull down whatever spell you desire. He gave a deep laugh. Magic is contrast. Magic is life. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had this really funny picture in my head where Ruby's like... Ruby, as I call him, is like... Standing like... Magic is love. Magic is life. <laughs> sorry, sorry. A manic look spread across Ruby's face. J James shrunk back and back and did not move or speak. I found myself stunned into silence as well and wishing sorely for someone else to intervene. So, you really want your plan fixed? Do you? I can do that. I can bring it back to life. That's what you want, is it not? I will do it all for you right now. The Archmagus moved his lips, whispering something arcane, and shoved the sand straight into the air. In a split second, something fell from the air and into his palm. His hand shoved back down and, uh, uh, swung back down and shoved out his fist. Here you are, mechanic, here's your plan. The head of a small white bird was poked out of his long fingers. The bird, uh, despite his distress, was completely motionless. In order to resurrect your precious project that will take the life of this bird, that is the price required to bring another organism back to life. Do you understand that? Truthfully, I believe uh, that, a dear, that a dear price to pay for something that cannot move or speak, but you're such a smart young lad. If you feel that exchange is deserved, then clearly, clearly must be so. I will end this poor creature's life and give you it to your plan. Is that agreeable to you? When James did not reply, I would have sworn the Archmagus hissed. He cupped his hand together over the face of the burst and stumped forward until he loomed over James. What happened to your eagerness to speak, mechanist? What is your answer? Do you wish for this lesson? Once I didn't want to share, you will have the knowledge to resurrect anything you want. A desperate chirping sounded from his hands. Between his fingers, where his feathers poked out. Rupert shoved the struggling animal towards uh, James' face. Save the fucking bird! Is that what you want? Tell me. 
Say that you want to witness a simple act of magic and that any will happen. James averted his eyes and made an active effort uh, to avoid having to answer. Rebus was clear and he, he would have none of that. Nothing? Well, that's your answer, then go ahead and say it. Say you want me to kill this bird because I will. Rubus! <laughs> I know this is not, like, supposed to be too funny, I don't know if it is, but this music in the background, and I just imagine Rupert's, like, going completely crazy, but, like, s centimeters from his face, and shoving his bird in his face, like, Do you want me to kill this bird? <laughs> and in this really calm voice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn, I love him. The prelude appeared and pushed his way through the crowd, elbowing his way past me. He shouldered in between Rubus and James and grabbed the Archmega's forearms, even though it was obvious he didn't have the strength to force Rubus back. It was more energy than I had seen in him before. Rubus, what are you doing? I saw him became very aware of the soldiers that had stopped to witness the tirade, and felt bad for not having done more. Stop it. Yeah, you're a bit stupid. Rubus stared at Lucius with the same crazed eyes, but slowly the fire began to fade. By the time he looked at James again, his eyes, his gaze were ice. Let me go, Lucius. This is nothing to you for, for you to worry about. Not from what I saw. What is going on? The two of them were speaking softly, but I could still make out the words. Nothing. He finally stood up and stepped back from James. The bird drunkenly, uh, flapped drunkenly from his open hands. He found him a word. Rubus turned around and stalked away. A hush fell over the soldiers, followed by a rising murmur. Finally, I found the will to speak again. I turned to Lucius, who seemed troubled. He took a moment to catch his breath. What was that about? Has this ever happened before? No, it's... Uh, it's not. The Archmagus is rather high strung, but this... I should not say more. I will go speak with him. With that, he took after Rufus. Only myself and James now remained in the void, and that was quickly being filled by soldiers resuming their march. James stood with the plan cradled to his chest. He was quiet and very still. Fuck no, I'm going after you, Rufus. I'm sorry. After seeing the state Rufus was in, and was in and knowing what he was capable of, it didn't feel right to let the prelate handle him alone, even if they were friends. I climbed back onto my mount to follow after them, but by the time I get there, they had already slipped somewhere out of sight. I looked behind me to see that James has vanished as well. There was nothing left for me to do, so I rode back to rejoin the commander. After several days' journey, we finally reached the edge of our free. Past the trees, we could bring uh, hear the rushing waters of the river Spira, over which the goddess Rich stand. Oh man, my throat is dying. There are so many words. <clears throat> I looked around and saw a mixture of excitement and dread on the soldiers' faces, especially the other little guardians. It meant that we were much closer to home. But at the same time, we were much closer to... Can you stop this music? This is not appropriate. <laughs> much closer to waging a war upon our own home. In the distance, uh, the river peeked through the trees. There was an impressive forty dam. I couldn't recall the name of it, but it was often hailed as a miracle of science for taming the temperamental river and promoting trade and farming in the region. I noticed James nearby, looking in the same direction I was. He could barely contain his excitement. He gave a long whistle. No, that was really bad. <laughs> I can't whistle. <laughs> I can, but it just sounds crap. Just look at that baby! Man, I wish I had time to go check that out, or better yet, take the guys to talk to the guys to build it! Though they're probably dead now, aren't they? We don't have time for any detours. And I know, maybe just on the way back? And that's the bridge. That's a weird form of a bridge. We finally rounded it one last bend, and the river came into full view along uh, with open sky and sun on overhead, uh, and our landmark. The goddess bridge was beautiful, sunlight gleaming off at the white marble. As Althea's face shone in the light with her arms outstretched to welcome us with, uh, with safe passage. 
Some say it was placed there by the divine hand of Althea herself. This, or with this view, I could almost believe it. But today, something marked the scene. Oh, fuck. A number of barrels were lashed to the sides, looking strangely out of place, like a defacement. Across the river, the guardian knights and soldiers surrounded the bridge and the banks of the roaring river. I heard rumbling up the king's upper head. It seems we have a warm welcome. At the center of the bridge stood another striking knight, a lone knight with her armor glinting in the sun. Her voice echoed on the stone and rang out across the front lines. King Kendrick, we've been awaiting you. The army came to a halt on the near side of the bridge. Commander Bruce advanced first, with the king behind him. Nick and the king's guard followed closely behind him, and I followed after. The knights continued to stand her ground. Commander Bruce dismounted and stamped angrily towards his her with his sword drawn. Stand aside, woman! What villain hides behind your skirts? Show us the face of the one who attacked our capital! She eyed Commander Bruce coolly. Sir Harris has been relieved of his duties. I am Commander Lori Metz, and I now lead this army. If you want to speak, you will speak to me. Nonsense, out of my way! The King Kendrick sauntered forward on his mount and stopped beside Commander Bruce. If I may, Bruce, your face looks familiar. Have you met before? <sighs> your recollection must run dull, Kendrick. I sought after an audience with you not, er, uh, not a month ago. The king stroked nonchalantly his beard. Perhaps you did. It's not my concern to recall every simpering and boy who pitches me. I shouldered past Nick to get a better view of what was happening. Larry Met looked about to burst. I assume you were here under direct orders of the Queen Charlotte? I serve the Queen's wishes, but your offense is a grievance of all so guard. I see nothing if I see nothing offensive in our actions. I merely wish to hold an audience with the Queen's head. Address the inedible fact that she launched an attack at our capital without provocation. The queen may be rash, but I'm certain that she's wise enough to see re reason. I would suggest you move aside and let us pass. It is in our best interest. I will not. This matter is over your head, Commander. While I'm here, I speak for... While I am here, I speak for the queen. You have taken our soldiers. You have sapped our resources. And now you advance on our land on the banners of war. You will not go further. This is wearisome, Commander. How long are you going to continue to lash out like a child? That is no way to conduct a negotiation. I am not here to negotiate, Kendrick. I am here to stop you. But you realize that you are vastly outnumbered. I am worth a hundred of your men. Such confidence. Care to put your words to the test? Kendrick climbed down from his reindeer, drawing his sword. The ringing steel cut through the air, a gasp arose. Lord, Lord Rimet grit her teeth. Is that a challenge, Kendrick? It is, in fact, Commander. If I defeat you, you and your men retreat. Send us a tribute of amends, and the Queen Charlotte may visit me at her leisure and discuss the terms of Silgard's relationship with Alfreya. And if I win, then you win. My league, you can! Come on, come, Bruce. You really think I can't take down a single knight? This knight's strong, look at her. She's a badass. I think you couldn't die. You couldn't die. Even you've never bested me. But, on your mark, Commander. The bridge cleared of soldiers as Laurie met it and Kendrick squared off. The, the, the king, you couldn't die. You couldn't die. <laughs> I'm sorry for not believing in you, but you couldn't die. <laughs> I retreated with Nick to the riverbank. The prince had made his way to the front army. He stood beside us, watching his father. The knight drew her sword, metal gleaming in the afternoon afternoon suit. <laughs> I just realized this is part eight. That's no good. I haven't mentioned it yet. Do you know eight is my lucky number? <laughs> right now we got that out of the way. Um, King's gonna die? <laughs> King's gonna die? 
The king cast off his cloak, revealing the light functional armor he wore beneath. What a show off. I couldn't help but be taken aback. Aren't you worried? The king could be killed. I last looked a bit grave. I'm more worried about her. My father and I are monocrats, battle in our blood. Oh, he always says. My father can outfight any soldier here, no contest. She hasn't a chance. He's gonna die. The king gave a deep, gallant bow. Commander Lurie Metz responded in kind, briskly, never taking her eyes off the man. The knight strode towards the apex of the bridge, planting her feet firmly on the stone and taking an opening stand. I could barely make out her words over the rush of the river. Let's see what you're made of, Kendrick. The king rushed towards her. Within an instant, there became a flurry of movement and clashing blades. The king moved with surprising grace, easily parrying all of Laurie Met's heavy thrusts. You lack finesse, Commander. Do you see what I mean? <clears throat> you should see him in the practice yard. He trains like a madman. He's untouchable. Oh, I think she's gonna touch him. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna kill him. <laughs> um, their swords met, the piercing ring of locked steel cutting through the air. The two combatants glared at each other, struggling for position. With a forward push and a swirl, push and a swirl of his arms, the king had Lorimette's sword forced to the ground. Lorimette stumbled to the uh, side when suddenly her left arm swung forward. A hidden dagger. She forced both weapons towards the king, attacking with vicious stabs, but he continued to parry them. Not your only finesse, Commander. You lack honor. What did you know about honor? Her attacks intensified and their swords met once more. Their apprehension from the crowd was terrible. Once again, she stabbed at his arm with a dagger, narrowly missing a perfect opening. Using the memento of the knight's body, he pushed her to the ground, sword tumbling out of her hands in the fall. He saw it cut in the air and pursued and paused deliriously at her throat. Not deliriously, I didn't see that word. King Kendrick, Kendrick stood over Laurie Metz victorious as a cheer rose from the crowd. When she did not move, he turned and lifted his swords to the soldiers in celebration. Uh, Laurie Metz only glared up at him, her face twisted and loathing. Do you think this is fair? Do you, I do believe I won this battle. We had an agreement, Commander. Now run back to your queen. The vows of a liar bind... The vows of a liar bind nobody. You think that because you hold all the power, you make all the rules... All the rules? Because your land is more vast and your fort is stronger, you think that still God will bend to your will? That is not how this ends. Yeah. I thought so. This is gonna end completely like, um, in that Game of Thrones episode where, uh, that foreign guy was, that guy from the east or south was fighting, um, the mountain and he just walked around him and was, was victorious and then he got, his face got smashed. Um, yeah, this is what's gonna happen. With a sudden jerk of the body, she kicked between your armor straight in the groin. The king staggered back, his face red, seething. The king, the knight, rolled away to where his sword was and scrambled to her feet. She rose the blade again to point at the king, but she looks like she was shaking. If you wish to set another foot on our land, you do it over my corpse. She lunged at him in desperate rush. The king recovered his stance and pushed forward to block her. Despite her rage and her movement, she was unable to get past his defenses. The crowd had fallen to silence as we awaited the impending death of the night with some excitement, uh, some with excitement, some with fear. I felt sick to my stomach, unsure who I hoped to would win. I just don't think the king's gonna die. After continuing to block her attacks impassively, the king Kendrick dashed forward and returned the unfair blow with a sharp kick to Lori Met's shin. The knight faltered, the king did not miss his chance, he raised the pommel of his sword and struck her hard across the face. Lorimet stumbled back, nearly dropping his sword half bent to the ground. The king loomed over her. 
Then a whistling sound rushed through the air. I, I knew it. An arrow sipped over Laurie Met's lowered head into the king's shoulder. The king grundled and stared down in disbelief. Before anyone had the time to react, two more arrows struck into his body and another. Laurie had flattered herself on the ground and ducked quickly to the side of the bridge as the barrage of arrows and bolted rained down. Bolts rained down from the side of the bridge, pounding into the King Kendrick's body. As projectiles rained from his, into his solid form, his body twisted and fell, facing out towards us. Shock, surprise, and anger seized from his dying eyes. The arrows did not cease until the king's dead, king's dead body hit the ground. For a moment there was only silence and stillness on both sides. Father, Alistair spoke the word with a childish confusion. Father! The look of utter horror on the prince's face was a feeling I had only known when I watched my own father take his dying breath. He rushed forward towards the king's crown, rolled as the king's crown rolled from his head and bounced down a few steps of the bridge, catching it up, cradling in his arms. On the bridge, the knight faltered to her feet, looking ragged. She looked fretfully from my side to the bridge and down the king's lifeless body. It's over, she shouted across to us, her voice shaking but powerful. Cowards! That's all I have to say to you. You are a coward. I'm pretty sure you have a root. And I was actually gonna give it a try. Even though I'm straight. So now don't be angry with me, people. I'm not gonna play her root in whenever the full version of whatever is out. Only because she is a coward. And she just land landed on my blacklist. I'm sorry. Sorry for anybody who loves her. But I am a person in these scenarios. I have a lot of honor myself. I am disgusted with her. Oh wow, I'm talking very harshly. She shouted, her voice shaking but powerful. This fight is over. Go back to your lands and do not set another foot in our soil. This war is done. Commander Bruce ran to the king's body with the king's guard in town. They lifted him carefully and brought him back to our side. Confident that the fight was through, Lori met retreated to her side of the bridge. The king was laid down on the ground in the state that made most of the soldiers that look away. The commander knelt on the ground, shaking him by the shoulder. My liege, your majesty! Elisa tried, stood silently with the crown in his arms, staring down. The commander kept on trying to shake life into the corpse. Finally, Nick crouched down beside him and put a hand on Bruce's shoulder. Sir, the king is dead. Bruce slapped his hand away. Get back, boy, you know nothing! The prelate finally made his way into the scene. He looked down at the king's unmoving form and knew in an instant what we all did. He isn't wrong, command. The king has been summoned to Althea's arms. Please leave him to me so that I will not stand for this. He sprung to his feet and hopped to the foot of the bridge so he could see over the army. We take our vengeance for those who, who love our country. We fight! A ripple cheer spread across the floor, troops uh, from the near end to far. I drew a signal that we advanced. I was caught near the front line, so I went forward with them. We st start started towards the crest of the bridge, just in time to see this Bulgarian army preparing to launch a defense. Faintly, I could hear Hilary met. HOLD! And that was when everything happened. I was stunned by a huge column of flame. The earth shook. The dull roar went rent the air and pieces of rock rained down on us. Suddenly it got very dark. Jump out of the way, watch it closely, shout, stare at it. This, 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 this. <laughs> uh, jump out of the way! I leaped out of the way of the falling mess. Herc! <laughs> the soldier behind me wasn't so lucky and disappeared under the rubble. God, it's Sophia! Alex, are you okay? I'm fine. 
I wish you could say the same about our men, though. Our soldiers were scattered, frightened, frightened, fleeing. The six of us were trapped on the remnants of the bridge, pressed in by a throng of soldiers in rubble, unable to escape the small but deadly hail of arrows still raining from the other side of the river. I looked to the others. Prince Alistair was clutching his father's crown, weeping silently. Nick was pelling, panicking, shouting uh, uh, unconvincing and disjunct and disjoined orders at the men who ignored him in their own hysteria. Commander Bruce just looked lost, like he simply couldn't understand what just had happened. The army was going to break apart and scatter it this way. Someone had to get this under control, or we are as good as dead close to this close to enemy territory. Stop! Some men heeded my words, but hundreds more fled. We have to stick together more than ever. What happened today shall not be in vain, nor shall it break us. A smattering uh, of arrows whistled past me. I stepped onto the top of a piece of rubble. Anyway, despite that, so the men could see and hear me better. Get to the small forest in the Bank River. The trees will provide cover from arrows. We will regroup and come back stronger. The soldiers nodded to me. They started moving again, but purpose purposely now, to the small uh, four cups of the tree. Nick, help me get Prince Alistair. Come on, get on your feet. We pulled the prince between us as he cradled the crown and dragged him into the small woods. As we retreated into the woods, uh, the assaults of projectiles gradually ceased. The arrows had, had been numerous, had, hadn't been that numerous though. Had still God been caught as off guard by the explosions that we had? God's road was just a bit further ahead, a clear patch uh, cutting right through the river island. How innocently it would walk down that road, straight into Sulgar's trap for the king. I still couldn't believe it. The king's dead. But this was no time to mourn. That could wait until we were safe. Until then, someone had to ensure st stability. And at least, and now, and at least for the moment, it seemed this person was me. In an effort to refocus myself, I shifted my attention to our surroundings. A wall of snow toppled evergreens in enveloped us, providing shelter from the hostile riverbank. The soil beneath my feet, feet crunched frozen solid from the frost. There was a light breeze in the air, carrying the sp smell of gunpowder and macerine from the destroyed bridge. I shivered, suddenly realizing that I had worked up a, worked up a sweat after the encounter on the bridge. That was sure a way to catch a chill. Looking around me, I could see some men were drenched from falling into the river. It was a miracle they had survived, survived such strong currents. I wondered how many had not been so lucky. To avoid any further losses, we have to get some fires going soon. But fires meant smoke, and smoke meant visibility. The Sulganians had planned ahead. Was it possible their soldiers were hiding in these very woods, waiting to finish us, us off? I peered at the dense forest, trying to discern any movement. Sulgar was our enemy, but the cold could be just as deadly at the moment. What was more dangerous at this time? How should I decide? Please don't give me a choice on that. As I tossed various ideas around in my head, the true weight of my new responsibility started to sink in. We'd lost a lot of men, and those who stayed behind looked at me with apprehension. Could I live up to their expectations? A small party came to a small clearing far enough away from the riverbank to be sheltered uh, from sight and arrows. Alistair, who until now had been easily carried by Nick uh, like a limb, a corpse had recovered somehow. We have to pursue them. Now. He was agitated, toying with the ground still in his hand. We could just retreat. With the losses we've suffered, it would be wise to. My father died on that bridge. They know he's dead. If we don't do something. Just as Alistair spoke, there was a loud noise in the distance, like a clap of thunder. I looked at the sky out of heaven, not a drop of rain or snow in sight. A dull roar accompanied by a whooshing noise. Faint first, but then it grew steadily louder. Fuck. I'm sorry, but fuck. <laughs>